This is a Y254 discussion Monday. That is if you just tuned in and our discussion tonight, we are looking at the proposal of affordable housing by the government where uh, if the government finds its way through uh, from the petitions in court to have its proposed affordable housing, then all Kenyans in formal employment will have to part with 1.5% of their earnings in the contribution towards uh, this project that the government wants to see. Uh, about 500,000 houses built by 2022. And this is a conversation that has brought an uproar out here. And tonight, Discussion Monday is what is uh, what it wants to look about. And uh, we dwell into that. But before then, I will ask my guest one, one question. question. Do you support this, Daniel? <laughs> no, I don't. You don't? I, I don't support this initiative. All right. Gojiri, do you support it? Okay, uh, let me be honest. I have my reservations as regards to this 1.5% mm -hmm. house levy. So if it was well crafted and uh, it was well looked into, then I would have no objections, but I have some reservations. All right. Yes. So the conversation has been ongoing and uh, the government assures Kenya that there was public participation into this because many people are saying we were not involved. And uh, maybe from your knowledge, was there any public participation towards this project? And how did the government uh, arrive at 1.5% to have this uh, project? Well, well again, um, it's quite critical to consider some, some of these, uh, put them into perspective, because Public participation is one of the requirements in Article 10 of the Constitution. The national values that we are having is one of them. But then why would we have public participation after the declaration of a project? So each and every time I hear the feedback about, you know, we consulted, who did you consult? How did you arrive into conclusion? And how was the report made? Now look here. One of the big four agenda is on affordable housing. And I always say that matters of housing is not really um, a problem. When you look at housing, you deal with access, affordability, and quality. That's what defines the housing. But if you, again, for example, would want to roll out such a big and a mega initiative without the stakeholder involvement, it becomes a white elephant project. You put it so clearly that, you know, if you want to tax 1.5% from my salary, you only tax what I worked for and my pay. The report in this country shows that almost 65% of the youth are either unemployed or underemployed. So unemployment means they're at home and hustling to get something to do. Unemployment means they're employed, but then getting little in consumer to what they should get. So when you tax 1.5% from underemployment salary, you end up you know, putting these young people into underprivileged under conditions. So well, Gujiri would want to be very diplomatic about it. <laughs> well, I, 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 I say that, you see, when you have, you either support an initiative, you don't have a reservation about bad policies. Okay. So the policy about, you know, the, uh, the housing mm -hmm. is, is, is either that we tell the government, come on, be real. All right. Or could you retract back and consider some of the nitty gritties about this policy? It's not a bad policy. All right. But as far as I'm concerned, I think Kenyans should not be coerced True. into paying 1.5% if yeah. they not earn something that is consumer. Uh, Gojiri, as you respond to that, you will tell us whether you are involved. You see, my friend Daniel says that uh, I either support or don't support. Yet, he's the one who says that uh, it is not a bad policy. But he said he opposes it. So I can see the double standards so from uh, my colleague here. So far. But again, mm -hmm. I was talking to Nicholas yesterday in uh, Moranga County. Nicholas who? A 34-year-old man who is an employed and works at the informal sector. Okay. Today, again, I talked to Gabriel, who is also in the informal sector and uh, is not employed by government in uh, Juja constituency. And uh, some of the concerns 
that I got from both of them is we don't know what this housing levy is about. Mm -hmm. What will happen to us All right. who are not employed? So that one speaks to the question you just asked as regards to whether I was consulted or not. I was never consulted. So you also didn't and, know? Of course, public participation, one of the prescripts mm -hmm. of uh, public policy right. is that uh, the people that are going to be involved mm -hmm. in a decision must be involved in the decision-making process. That is outright. And uh, for government, mm -hmm. it would have been very key right. if they got better alternatives. I don't oppose uh, the housing project, but again, mm -hmm. My reservations are as follows. Number one, mm -hmm. where is the good number of unemployed Kenyans? True. Number two, what is the formula that will be used to distinguish who will get uh, that affordable uh, house, right. who will not get? Number three, why do you want to force or why must people be forced mm -hmm. to pay a taxation that they will not benefit from? Let me tell you something, right. Hillary. Right. In, uh, since 2012, there is an organization called the Habitat for uh, uh, Humanity in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a global, uh, it's a global humanity agency that partnered with the uh, overseas uh, corporations in order to use American entrepreneurs to invest over 300 uh, US dollars, million US dollars. How it worked was through financing microfinance institutions. Those are banks, circles, All right. and those microfinance institutions would then create credit that would enable the commoners to be able to get affordable loans, which was optional. Okay. And uh, those people would be able to now build their affordable houses. Right. So my reservations are, number one, how, I, how many? I, how many I, do you have? Listen, let me make my Briefly. point. Eh? <laughs> let me make my point. Okay. I, I, I know it was, uh, it was an irredecent venture by government to ever dream of uh, giving its citizens right. affordable houses. But again, it is not each and every person who needs that house. Some have. Exactly. Uh, and uh, so let me, let me, let me uh, ask government to relook into that policy that. again once more. All right. Actually, as we speak, we have uh, petitions in court from uh, Federation of Kenya's Employers and Consumer Federation of Kenya. So we, we won't dwell much on that because it's a matter in court already. But we are saying if this thing goes on, then we will have to people in the formal employment will have to part with 1.5% of their earnings. But then we have people who are, have, are servicing mortgages. We also have people who own their houses. When Gisana, they have their, their homes. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming a person who is 40 years, they have their house. So if they, they will have to contribute this 1.5%, whose house will they be building? Theirs, yeah, their okay. children, or do they have a right to sell it maybe later? Well. I, I think th those are the issues I see. This, this is very unpopular policy, and uh, I still insist on what uh, I said before. One, you've actually intimated that you see there are people who are still on mortgage, housing mortgage, and they're paying. You know, some are paying long term. Uh, you know, for a long time. Mm. I, I was just wondering and asking myself a question: Should the government facilitate? a citizen to get a house or should the government give a house to a Kenyan citizen? Okay. These, these are questions that we is lingering on my mind and what I'm thinking is from a human rights based approach housing is a necessity and that becomes a right in our constitution. I think article 40 as you read it through those are third generation rights that will come with this constitution and it's uh, all Kenyans should be given an affordable and, and accepted and quality houses. Now, uh, he's, he's, uh, uh, he's brought up a very, very important element. I want to refer you, not very far, mm. um, 
Right here in Langata, the government through the UN Habitat had initially rolled up a housing project, a location of the housing. And everybody is aware that as we speak, the residents of Kibra and Langata who are relocated to those houses sold the houses or others rented them out and are still getting, you know, house rent until we speak. Yes. So I think it speaks on, on the government. That was so loud to the government that people are saying, you know, our issue probably might not be a house. And I agree with what he says. Now, it probably should not be a house. But our issue is trying to make a living, you know. Okay. Get enough economical empowerment that is able to help us pay for the house. Right. So the question is, why did Kibera residents rent the houses that were given by UN Habitat at upgrading program, went back to the slums, and government thought they needed houses? So there are so many critical issues that we really need to ask step by step. Again, we are into a government, and I think it's always important also to provide an option, not only to criticize the government, but also give the government an option. The option is revise on the strategy. Pick, for example, houses that we have in Makadara, in Jamhuri, or in other areas that are owned by the government, probably through the Nairobi City County, or all uh, devolved system of government. Remember, uh, the president had actually asked the governors to come to the state house so that he would share the Big Four agenda. Yeah. So my proposal is the initial houses, why would you try to renovate the houses? Or if there's spacing within those houses, construct other houses. Right. And where they need be, that you relocate Kenyans, relocate them in those houses. Because 500,000 houses within a span of three years, it's not tenable. So okay. I think that would just become a foundation of affordable housing, which is in the big four agenda. All right. As opposed to white ele be it becoming a white elephant project. Gojira, as you respond to that question, I also want you to tell us, in your own opinion, where do you think these houses will be? Are we speaking about Nairobi? How about other 40, 46 counties? The people in the rurals, they have their homes. Yes. Where are they building? In their, in their chambers or they'll come to Nairobi? Yes. As in, that is what I want to, to understand as a youth. Yes, again, to quote what uh, Zach Gashamba would tell me in one of our uh, discussions about this housing levy. Number one, the position of the young people is that uh, you must empower them and uh, give them jobs so that they can be able to make a living, not only to afford houses, but also to make uh, to live a dignified life. If you are able to give jobs to the young people, then that one means that they will be able even to access mortgages. You see, we have a national housing corporation, which is indeed uh, dreaming of building 500,000 uh, houses in a good time. So that one tells you that uh, if you empower the young people, then you are taking a step uh, uh, in the right in the right direction. Then coming back to your question, I know of uh, the government's plan to have uh, uh, those houses in urban centers. I also know that uh, in some, I, I don't know whether I would call them some urban rural mm -hmm. or uh, the grammar thereabouts, but then those houses will be built, not like it will, it will be a one house venture, like uh, my friend Daniel will have his own house. Mm -hmm. It will be maybe a one, a, flat. a one flat. If you need a bed sitter, you get your bed sitter. You need a, a one bedroom, you get a one bedroom. Now this and, bed sitter, and, and, uh, yes. this bed sitter, will it equal the amount I have contributed? See, and then see, for see, how long? You see, a bed sitter mm -hmm. is uh, going to cost about 600,000. So, number one, I ask myself very many questions because if we are going to live as a community in that particular uh, flat, it means that we will have to pay for the caretaker's uh, allowances, we will have to, to, to pay the maintenance allowances, mm -hmm. we will have to pay perhaps the gatekeeper, we will have to pay so many other services. So as I look at it from a prismatic angle, I see a very expensive affair here, whereby if we are not careful, we are going to see a situation whereby people will either, like he said, mm -hmm. uh, rent those houses or even sell them. Yes. Notwithstanding 
uh, the kind of uh, expense, uh, expensive uh, budgeting that has been put in place. All right, Orogo, let me touch where the youth will be uh, much pressed. We have a big number, like you just mentioned, we have a big number of people who are not employed, and if they're employed, they are under underemployed. Now, I am looking at this span, they want to have these houses. Who will build them? <laughs> Right, because mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll have a case of tenderpreneurship in this case. We'll have people because so and so can do a good job, let him have it. And then I hear that the government will buy from it. But then, where is the youth? This youth who has no job, maybe for the last 10 years, and he is expected to have a house in three years. What will happen? Well, well uh, also, also um, bringing another factor to it is most of the employment and they could you could see this uh, from the statistics I, I i'm sure that young people most of them are, are on contract basis right um and uh, when you subject somebody on contract it means that when you begin to cut the levy you're not assured how long um, that young person is going to stay on that job for some time so um where is uh, the youth I think from time in memorial, you've seen that the only place young people are always placed, especially on the industrial activities or probably at the manual, <laughs> uh, you know, um, trying to build, carry the bricks and all these things. Casual work. Uh, casual work. And, and so it, 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 it's very, it brings a very interesting question. First of all, you are building houses that would actually house a generation of young people who are probably between 18 between 18 to 35 years right now mm -hmm. and this project as i tell you might take even a long time it might not even be within three years this is just a foundation probably and that young person is on is not on permanent job employment is on a contract and those who are not on a contract are placed at a casual work the casual laborers mm -hmm. so i think is uh, is one of the policies that uh, is strategically and it's inspired to exclude the young people, both in uh, job and those who are within the informal settlement who will provide right. the labor toward this thing. Remember, there's another component that we are yet to touch. Like you said, tenderpreneurs and entrepreneurs, the building materials might or might be exported as well. We still do not know. All right. Yeah, so if, if it's in a case mm -hmm. that this will be exported, it actually brings to a very, very important element that young people who are actually building blocks and burning bricks and all over from the rural areas that could supply mm -hmm. might not uh, uh, get employment. Gujuri, I know you're supporting the government. <laughs> I think, I think I, I, one, I, one, 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 I agree. It, it, I, I it, know it, it, it's, 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 it's uh, my government. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, wait, just and a it minute. is his opinion is it's, allowed. It's, 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 it's one of the things that we should actually be very uh, concerned about. That we are not here to find, you know, poke holes yeah. each and every time in what the government does. True, true. But it's important for this government to listen to a chunk that contributes a lot of economical growth to this country. And these are the young people, always each and every time. Involve them, participate, ask them their question, get their feedback, so that this project should be well. It is in the entire generation. Gojiri? Yes, as one of the young citizens who would want to see Kenya in the better side of the economic giants in this world. Perhaps I would want to take a case of an advanced democracy like the United States, whereby they have, uh, like I said, an overseas private investment corporation, which is composed of American entrepreneurs that are able to finance and you just asked who will build the houses that are uh, being promised by government so the u.s has that corporation which now is comprised of the private sector people who are able to finance the corporation and they are able to give or they are able to create credit to microfinance institutions that covers the unemployed because we also have the unemployed populace in this country and they are the majority True. people in the informal sector so we also need to have them on board 
whereby the government has a kitty. Like in the US, they have a micro build fund. That is what they normally call it. Mm. So even in Kenya, we need also to have a fund that takes care, takes care of those who are not yet employed but would wish to have affordable housing. Again, we are government... running out of time if you be <laughs> brief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If, 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 if we look at uh, now in a general principle as regards to what the government has promised, the right. 1.5 house levy, number one, let me say it is a good thing, especially as a growing country to also benchmark even with the uh, advanced democracies. Okay. But again, let us look at who needs these houses. Are we talking of concentrating more on housing and forgetting health? Are we forgetting, uh, are we talking which health is a, is, a, is a basic, it should be a basic requirement for any human being survival? Because without health, people cannot be able to work and right. create for economy. So. Let us, uh, we can focus on uh, food security more. Mm -hmm. We can focus on uh, universal health care more. We can focus on manufacturing more, which even is a decent public policy, which mm -hmm. creates jobs, which is, which is also able to create uh, money to the economy, which can also be able, can be used to uh, finance mortgage right. for these people to build houses. So without health, and uh, food security and manufacturing. I think that uh, even uh, this uh, housing project will not be achieved. So let us first arrange them. Right. Number one, food security. Let us make sure that uh, people who are Meshiba, they have something. Number two, they are healthy. And number three, they have jobs. All right. Those who need houses can uh, be able even to build for themselves. But those who feel that uh, they can be included in the government's housing scheme, mm -hmm. can also join the board. So I join the paragon of saying, let those that wish to have uh, their houses in the government scheme have, okay. and let those who are employed but right. also wish to take a mortgage in a private uh, venture, do it. All right. Yes. 30 seconds. You know, you know, uh, you know Goodie puzzles me sometimes. And it's your final recommendation. This is something that has been gazetted. Listen, let's be real. The problem of giving the last opportunity to is that he's going to. I'm the one who will bite the bullet. No, 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 no. The government had already gazetted this. It means it's something that has already taken an effect. All right. Without consultation and without proper mechanism to do this. So this is something that is already taken an effect. Our economy is at 5.6%. And therefore, if we begin to comparatively talk about, for example, um, the, uh, you know, Singapore and US, I, th I think it's important that Sorry. we be real to the situation that are affecting Kenyans. And I agree with him uh, surmountably when he says, if you are willing to get a housing uh, house, would you just tell the government that I am willing? so that the government would actually categorize you in the area yeah. the that should be given the housing. housing. Yes. Yes. All right. so if, if you are, if you are hard pressed, <laughs> if you are hard pressed, then there is no way the government would actually force an, a policy. Right. And this is why I said so far, this is a policy that I oppose and subject and subject to a number of issues that should be looked into. But so far from where I stand, it's, mm. it's really unpopular. All right, yeah. we are out of time. I would love us to continue this conversation. Gonjiri, I know you are so much pressed. You want to say something, but we don't have time. Many thanks for coming and sharing your comments and opinion. I hope this information will get out there and something will be done. They have been my guests in Gonjuri Karaoke and Daniel Orogo. Many thanks for keeping us company. Coming up next is Uwai Mashariki. I hear Susumila will be around, so keep it Y254 and know what will happen on Uwai Mashariki. See you on Friday. Deliver Hillary is my name.